Number nine, which of the following series converge to two? Alrighty, so we basically need to find the sum if possible. Um, this first one, um, I'm just going to check to show you that it's not even going to converge. If I do the nth term test, remember that is finding the limit as n approaches infinity. If I let n approach infinity, I'll end up with infinity over infinity, so I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. So I'll get 2 over 1, which equals 2. Since this doesn't equal 0, the series diverges. So I don't even need to worry about that one. Okay, the next one and the next two, I can kind of tell that they're geometric sequences. Um, so what we are going to do is I'm going to try to set it up like one. So this is going to be negative 8 times negative 1 third to the n power. And then if you remember, the sum of a geometric series is a over 1 minus r, and a is the first term, and r is the ratio. Okay, so for this one right here, I'm going to have negative 8 times the first term, since I'm starting at 1. If I plug in 1, I'll get negative 1 third, so it's going to be negative 1 third over 1 minus the common ratio would be negative 1 third. So this is going to turn into 8 thirds up top, and... 4 thirds down below, so I'll have 8 thirds times 3 fourths, and that will reduce to 2. So this series does converge to 2. Now I need to check the other one. I'm going to come down here. I could rewrite that as 1 half to the n, so again, it's a geometric series. So the first term on this one, I actually get to plug in 0 for the first term. So 1 half to the 0 is 1, so it's going to be 1 over 1 minus the ratio, which is 1 half. So this will be 1 over 1 half, which would be 1 times 2, which is also two. So this series also does converge to two. So it will be two and three, which is choice E. All right, number 10. If the function f given by f of x equals x cubed have, has an average value of nine on the closed interval zero to k, then k equals what? All right, average value. Average value is one over b minus a times the integral from a to b of the function. All right, so we know that my function, so first of all, I know the integral is going to go from 0 to k, so it's going to be 1 over k, 0 to k. I know my function is x cubed, and actually I also know one more thing. I know my answer has to equal 9. So if I'm working this out, I'm going to get 1 over k times, actually it will be 1 over 4k x to the fourth, and then I get to evaluate it at k and 0. If I plug k into my problem, I'm going to get k to the fourth over 4k, which will reduce to k to the third over 4, and then minus, if I plug in 0, I will get 0, and that still equals 9, so now I'm going to have k to the third over 4 is equal to 9. If I cross multiply, I'm going to get k cubed equals 36, and to get rid of the third power, we can raise both sides to the one-third power, so I'll get k equals 36 to the one-third, which is option E, so E will be my answer. Number 11, which of the following integrals gives the length of the graph y equals sine square to x between x equals a and x equals b, where zero is, a is between 0 and b? Alrighty, um, we know to get an arc length, I'm going to go ahead and put the length arc length formula. It's going to be the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared dx. <clears throat> so I need to actually find y prime. Um, on this one, since I've got... Um, um, parentheses, I'm going to make the sine of u. So the derivative of sine of u will be cosine u times du. And the cosine, the u, was square root of x. And the du, the derivative of square root of x, is 1 over 2 square root of x. So this will be cosine square root of x over 2 square root of x. All right, so if I'm using my arc length formula, I will go from a to b, square root, 1 plus the derivative, which would be cosine square root x over 2 square root x squared. And now if I just try to simplify this, when I take, a, I need to square each part, so this will be cosine squared square root x over 2 squared is going to be 4, the square root of x squared is x. So if I'm looking at which answer matches that, and the biggest thing, notice, the one is not connected with that, it's just totally separate. So if I'm looking at which one would match that, I believe it is choice D. 
Right, number 12, which of the following integrals represents the area enclosed by the smaller loop of the graph of r equals 1 plus 2 sine theta? All right, we're going to have a little bit of an issue here because if you don't, or if you're not familiar with what this looks like, then you're kind of in trouble. So we did have, because this is a non-calculator problem, um, we did have a <clears throat> sheet that gave some of the common um, pictures for that, and this specific one, 1 plus 2 sine theta, it looks like, whoops, something like that. So it kind of looks like a loop. We've, I'm going to make that better. It's supposed to go on the axis when we do the looping. It's supposed to look something more like that. Okay. So um, the biggest thing, when we're finding the area, remember the area is always just going to be one half the integral from a to b of r squared d theta. So some of them I can just cross out because if it's not the radius, we know the radius is going to be 1 plus 2 sine theta squared d theta. My problem is the biggest problem, and even if I didn't know what the picture looked like, I could get it this far. It's just finding the a and the b that are going to be my difficulty. I could cross off e because there's no squared. I can cross off b because there's no squared. I can cross off d because there's no one half, um, and then I'm stuck with choice a and choice b. And then if I'm looking at this picture, the smaller loop would represent a smaller area. If I'm going from negative pi over 6 to 7, 6 pi, negative pi over 6 would be down here. And if I go to 7, 6 pi, it's going to be over here. And notice that's a big area. So that actually would be the big loop. A little loop, 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6, that's how that little loop is drawn. So it's actually going to be A. And I guess without um, getting to use a calculator for this, we probably could have figured out the 7 pi over 6 to the 11 pi over 6 versus this one. Because if it's a smaller root loop, we're not going to cover as much space. Okay, number 13. The third degree Taylor polynomial about x equals 0 of ln 1 minus x is what? All right. If you need to on this problem, you could have actually found the derivative. You'd get y prime equals negative 1 over 1 minus x, and then we could keep going, keep going, keep going. I am not going to do that because I'm going to assume that I know what this looks like. We have the ln of x. The formula that I have memorized for this one is x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared over 2 plus x minus 1 cubed over 3. And I could keep going, but I don't need to because it's a third degree Taylor polynomial. And now from here, this was for ln x. So if I'm going to do ln 1 minus x, wherever I see an x, I need to put 1 minus x. So I'm going to get 1 minus x minus 1 minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared over 2 plus 1 minus x minus 1 cubed over 3. And now just simplifying this out, the ones are going to cancel each other out, so I'll get negative x. Ones are going to cancel each other out. Negative x squared is x squared, but we still have a minus sitting in front of it. And then these cancel out. Negative x cubed is actually negative x cubed over 3. So the one that would match this one is choice A. Okay, problem 14. If dy dx equals y secant squared x, and y equals 5, when x equals 0, then y equals what? All right, so they give us the derivative, and they give us some information about y. All right, so if we want, we're at the derivative, and we want to get y, I definitely know that I need to take the derivative, whoop, the integral, excuse me, and since I see an x and a y, I'm actually going to need to cross-multiply on this one. Okay, so I'm going to put a 1 underneath, and now I'm having dy equals y secant squared x dx, I need to divide both sides by y to get the y over where it belongs. Okay, so I have that. And then from here, I can go ahead and take the integral of both sides. The, the integral of dy over y is going to be the natural log of y. And then the integral of secant squared x is going to be tangent x plus c. The next thing we're going to do... Yes. The next thing we're going to do is the logarithm loop. And if I do that, I'm going to get ce to the tangent x is equal to y. And then from here, I know my y is 5 when x equals 0. So I'm going to have ce to the tangent 0 is equal to 5. And then I know that the tangent of 0 is 0. So e to the 0 is 1. So I'm going to get c equals 5. So my equation will be y equals 5e to the tangent x. And that will be 
choice C. All right, problem 15. The graph of the function f above consists of four semicircles. If g of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of f, where is g of x non-negative? So I want to know where will I get an answer that is not negative. All right, so I'm just going to start. I notice, is it from negative 3 to 3, negative 3 to 2, and then it splits. So I'm just going to try values all the way going from um, negative 3 to 3 and just seeing what happens. So if I do g of negative 3, that's going to equal 0 to negative 3 of f, which is going to equal the opposite of negative 3 to 0 of f. And I notice if I do that, negative 3 to 0, okay, negative 3 to 0, since there is more underneath the curve than above the curve, that answer is going to be negative. However, I have a negative sitting in front of it, which is going to make this answer positive. So it will be non-negative there. The next one I'm going to try is g of negative 2. So I'm going to go from 0 to negative 2, um, which again, I have to do the opposite of negative 2 to 0. And negative 2 to 0 is definitely a negative answer. But again, I have to take the opposite of that negative answer, which again is going to be a positive. So that one also is non-negative. I'm now going to try negative 1. So if I'm going from 0 to negative 1, Again, I have to take the opposite of going negative 1 to 0. Negative 1 to 0, again, that answer is going to be negative. And then I have the opposite, so that will also equal a positive value. Keep going here, g of 0. The integral from 0 to 0 is 0. That also is non-negative. Keep going here. g of 1 will be the integral from 0 to 1, which is f. Um, 0 to 1. The area is above the x-axis, so it will be a positive value. I'm going to keep going here. g of 2 would be the area under the curve from 0 to 2. So from 0 to 2, that also is all above the x-axis, so that will also be a positive value. And then g of 3, um, if I go from 0 to 3, so if I take the area under the curve from 0 to 3, I do notice that there's more above the x-axis than below, so this again will be a positive value. So for all those values I tested, I was able to get a non-negative answer, so I am going to pick option A. Okay, problem 16. If f is differentiable at x equals a, which of the following could be false? All right, so let's figure out which ones could be true or are true first okay if a function is differentiable a it says f is continuous in order for a function to be differentiable it must be continuous so that must work all right the second thing it says the limit as x approaches a exists well if a function is differentiable then it's continuous if it's continuous then the limit must exist so there we go the next one is a little bit different and this is going to be more one that kind of looks like this it's following the difference quotient. And again, that is um, a definition of derivative. So basically, this is just saying that the derivative exists. Well, obviously, if a function is differentiable, the derivative exists. So that one is also true. The next one says f prime of a is defined. Well, f prime of a is the derivative. Um, if it's differentiable, yes, indeed, the derivative exists. So the last one, f, prime, f double prime of a is defined. This one could be false because I could have, let's say this is a picture of f prime. So that's a picture of f prime. You'll notice f double prime does not exist because there's a sharp turn there. So it is possible for e to be false. 